So I gotta tell you, it feels like it's been years we have been waiting for this release. And finally, it's here. I'm excited to jump into it. And that is the Second Sight Films release of Martin from George Romero. So let's dive into this beast real quick. So coming to us from Second Sight Films, who arguably skyrocketed as one of my favorite companies in the boutique label uh, industry is George A. Romero's 1977 film, Martin. And this has been in the works for a really long time. There is a two and a half hour director's cut of this film, all black and white, that was felt for a long time to be lost, right? Nobody could find it. And then in, I think it was 2021, there were rumors that it was found and it went up for sale and there was all kinds of crazy stuff that happened, right? So everybody was hopeful that we would finally see that full vision that Romero had for this film, right? And then it kind of came out that there might have been some issues with it, this or that. I don't really want to dive into the politics of it because to be quite frank, I don't even understand that stuff myself. But finally, we have Martin, and I got my copy here in the U.S. from Diabolic DVD, so thank you to them for actually stocking this for us. Uh, Second Sight Films did announce that this release was not going to be shipping to the U.S., so I was thankful to have a source like them to get this from. But this is a big, hefty box set, as Second, as Second Sight Films normally does, and uh, I figured we'd do a little unboxing, so let's tear into this thing real quick. So right off the rip, we have the Second Sight hard box, and this is going to be your front cover. Love that artwork. Absolutely love that. Your spine. And then the back. This is underneath of the J card. I love the simplicity. I love the colors. I love the little black and white there. So that's going to be your outer box. And when you pull out of, when you pull everything out of it, the first thing is this 100-plus page book in here. I mean, this thing is... This is a book, and there's all kinds of stuff. There's exclusive posters and alternate arts and all kinds of crazy things in here. There's some great stills as well as a bunch of writings up of the film. So I'll show you. This is the front cover for that. Beautiful. Great quality, too. As always with Second Sight Films, if this will focus. Great quality on the book. Huge. I do want to dive into this. This is just a... This is going to take some time, so I... <laughs> You also do get a handful of exclusive art cards, which I will show you. So we have this one here. We have that one there. And these are great. They're a nice matte quality. Mr. Tom Savini, the legend himself. And, of course, George Romero, who does have a small part in the film. Right there, he's constantly smoking and talking about wine. It's fantastic. And the last art card here and these are beautiful these are heavy stock they're matte in their appearance super high quality i love these prints and then you have second sight doesn't do like actual cases they do these kind of fold outs but on the fold out you have the front there and the back and then when you open this up there's actually three discs in here so you do have the full score on cd and then you have, uh-oh, the Blu-ray, along with the 4K over here in this little tri-fold. And that pops up. And all of this stuff fits real nice inside of this box here. I took the uh, little wrapping thing off of the R cards. Maybe that was a mistake. I need to not do that because these things tend to fall out if you're moving it or anything. But we'll just collapse this right back in here. Do do. And you got your nice, thick, beautiful box set. So Martin was shot in 1976 in the suburbs of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the reported budget for this film was said to be about 250000 But reports with producers and stuff later on kind of more so shaped that to be $100,000, right, to shoot this movie. So <clears throat> the film was shot on 16mm, was blown up to 35mm. Um, and it was actually done on reversible film so what they did was they kind of kept 
the end film bits and stuff that they had from shooting commercials. Romero and his crew shot a bunch of commercials before this, and they kind of kept all that and put it all together in order to actually shoot Martin. So it's really hard to find a true comparison source. There have been one or two DVD releases of Martin, so I, I don't own those. So really, I was just going off of uh, screenshots that I could find and stuff. And coming from it to from, from a not point of comparison, I think Martin looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, you can make the same case as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which it's not meant to be a beautiful looking film, but the 4K really helps out in the darks. So the darks are really dark and it makes the lighting beautiful in some uh, sequences. There's a great sequence when uh, our character's uncle is walking around. It's dark and it's foggy and it's supposed to be, you know, real crazy looking. And the darks are super dark and a little bit of light just accents the picture beautifully. Uh, it does a really great job. The The light scenes are really tough because they're not super contrasty. So you do get kind of this flatter image. And that's okay, right? I'm not saying that that's a problem. That is perfectly okay. I was 100% fine with it i thought it looked great my favorites though were the hallucinations and the dream sequences in this film are in black and white so that original two and a half hour cut that i mentioned before uh romero's original vision was for the entire film to be in black and white and he kind of like got a little bit of a battle with the producer over that and the producer said okay for this 95 minute theatrical one that we're gonna do you can do some black and white but let's leave it for the hallucination and the dream sequences. And right at the beginning of the film, before he's about to enter the private train car for his first victim, the fantastic black and white shot of her in the robe reaching out to him. I mean, it was like, it blew me away. I just loved, loved how it looked. And every single time that black and white popped up in the remainder of the film, those became my favorite visual elements, right? It makes me wish this was the full two and a half hour director's cut in black and white so I could experience this entire film. A, the hour of missing scenes out of here I do want to see, but I really want to see all of this in black and white because I'm sure HDR, the heavy crushed blacks, would absolutely elevate that picture just to another level and make the visual effect of this film so, so much better. And for the actual film itself, we need uh, we need to get that director's cut because Martin at 95 minutes, it feels cut up and chopped. And I know they did the best they could to make it flow right, but it does sometimes feel like there's some major jumps, right? Just You get this feeling that something's missing, and you can kind of see that, especially at the end, I felt that the heaviest. I don't want to spoil anything, but from the... In the third act, it kind of jumps real quickly through things into its conclusion. And even if you didn't know that there was a director's cut, it felt like something was missing, something was chopped up. But at the end of the day, Martin is a new Romero film for me. I had heard of it. I think I watched like 30 minutes of it or so on Shudder a couple of years ago. I think it was on there, but... When this was announced, I decided to just wait out and watch it in the best presentation that was going to be possible at the time. And I absolutely loved it. The, you know, you have this character who psychologically thinks he's a vampire. And uh, the hallucinations and the dreams and his mentality, he's very quiet and held back. And he has these hallucinations that, you know, he's been alive for, I think it was 86 years and he was once hunted down by a group of villagers, you know, with the whole like uh, fire, you know, pitchforks and all that stuff. And it comes into play when he's being chased by the cops towards the end of the film. And there's some really cool stuff that goes on with the character, uh, the relationship that he builds with his, it would be his uncle's daughter. So it would be his cousin is really cool. There's a lot of cool elements that I think make Martin work, but it's, George Romero's take on this original horror piece because at the core of this movie it's a vampire film whether or not the character truly believes he is a vampire Romero treats it like that and he does have some fun with it when he dresses up like Dracula and scares his uncle 
And, you know, George Romero kind of puts his humor in there, especially in the scene when he plays uh, the priest and he goes to the uncle's house and the uncle brings up the thought of the church needing to help him against demons and he's kind of laughing his way through it. And, you know, so Romero has his fun with it, but at the end of the day, this is a scary vampire film. And is that because the kill scenes are really difficult to watch? They're, they're slow... There's a lot of character in the way that he approaches the kill. Even towards the end when he makes his last desperate kill, the mistakes that he makes, and the way that Romero approaches that element of it so serious makes the actual subject matter scary. And so therefore the film walks this very delicate line of being aware how you know psychologically messed up our main character is and how there are laughs to be had about vampires and the lore and sort of uh you know addiction in a post-vietnam america especially in a, a working city like pittsburgh and its outer suburbs but also he takes the scary stuff in the film so serious that it just works a hundred percent perfectly i really just wish we had that director's cut so we could see the full vision i'm i'm still like hoping that I know the film's been found. I heard it was up for auction, all of this stuff. So I hope that a company like Second Sight or somebody's able to put out that full cut. That way we can see this in its entirety and its glory. Because I think there is a, this is already an incredible film. And I think that there's an even bigger, better film hidden inside of that black and white cut that the 4K would help out a ton. And I mean that. So, you know, don't sleep on this one because I don't know if that director's cut is ever coming uh, or who's going to put it out, but I'm just happy we have this as of right now. So if you're in the U.S., you cannot order Martin directly from Second Sight's website. Like I said before, I had actually ordered mine from Diabolic. I know Orbit DVD just posted they had a ton of copies, so if you are looking for this, I would run over there and try to see if they have any left. But much like the other long-awaited George Romero restoration that Second Sight put out with Dawn of the Dead. Martin is an incredible release and continues to defend my reasoning why I think Second Sight is one of the best boutique labels to be collecting. There is true love and care within this set. And if you're a fan of the film, a diehard, I'm sure there's going to be new information in here for you. There is a I think it's around 70 minute little making of kind of reflection documentary in here they actually go to the original sites there's a lot of cast and crew involved that are interviewed uh there's a couple commentaries in here one with george romero uh there's a bunch in here for you if you're a diehard fan and if you're just like a, a more casual collector like me who does love george romero this felt like a great entry point into the film for me personally i love the bonus features i do need to dive into the book in here and this entire release i'm just insanely happy with the packaging the presentation is beautiful i think the 4k rocks i think it's the best this movie's probably ever gonna look so this comes a very 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 high recommendation for me i recommend you trying to find this and pick it up there is also a standard 4k edition of it that second site did put out and they also did a standard blu-ray version as well now the blu-ray is region b locked but the 4K, which is region free, contains all of the bonus features on it. So really happy about that. That's actually one of the, one of the things that made me most happy is that all of the bonus features were accessible to me here in the U.S. with no issue. So pick up Martin. We need more, much like the amusement park, which RLGE put out and Shudder, thanks to the Romero Foundation, George Romero's filmography deserves this treatment they deserve to be seen in its full glory and he's he was an incredible filmmaker who there i know there's a couple other lost movies they're trying to find unfortunately that director's cut whatever happened with that it's very unfortunate that it that that became what it did and that we don't have access to it now but luckily we keep supporting physical media and because we do that companies continue to put the effort in because we're here to buy them time and time and time again so let's keep let's continue supporting physical media let's support the people who 
post about it, who make videos. Even yourself, if you have been like, man, I really want to start a YouTube channel, be like me and just do it. Like, just dive into it. It's an incredible community. Pick up Martin if you can, if you can find it. And do me a favor, comment below if you like Martin. All right, also comment, what Romero film are you waiting for a 4K release of me? I'd probably go with either Monkey Shines or The Dark Half. I know a lot of people are waiting on Day of the Dead. That deserves one as well. But hopefully there will be a time where we can get a complete catalog in 4K with the love and care that's gone into uh, what Second Sight Films has done for two of his films so far. So thanks for hanging out. I'll catch everyone later. See ya.